Hey everyone, um, I'm Cervante Pope with Revolver Mag, and I'm sitting here with one of the most distinct and influential voices in grindcore and death metal, um, Barney Greenway of Napalm Death. So, hi Barney. <laughs> Hello. I can't live up to that intro. Oh my, I know, down, I'm starting It's going to be downhill from here. Yeah. <laughs> So I definitely wanted to talk to you about the upcoming record. I'm interested in how you said that you just had this phrase that was in your mind, the album title, um, Throws of Joy and the Jaws of Defeatism, like back around when y'all started writing the record or working on the record in 2017. And I'm just wondering, like, what made that phrase pop into your head? And how did that kind of transform into this concept that grew into an album about otherness? Yeah, um, to be honest, I um, I always had the the other, you know, was always in mind, you know, since before we even started the process, you know. So, because um, the, the thing about Napalm is we always try to be current, you know, to what's going on around us because you, you can quite easily do um, whatever you're writing about. You can do fairly generic albums and, you know, with ideas and th th they kind of hang in the air a little bit. There's no real connection, but there were some very real things going on, which is where the other came from, you know, the, the, the whole concept of that. So, yeah, it was, it was there long before the title. The title was kind of refined a little bit later on. I, I always write in the same way, to be honest. That, that doesn't change in terms of mechanics of it. So then I'll have a number of ideas written down onto paper and I will basically be typing or writing, you know, if I've only got a piece of paper and a pen for like months on end. And so it'll end up in like a 50 page document, you know, <laughs> of which I'll probably use 0.05% of it or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's really like that. One of the tracks that really stands out for me with your vocal approach is Invigorating Clutch. Just the there's something that's just so raw and weighty about it but each song you know has a, its different approach from you and I'm wondering like how you went into it knowing like how you wrote the song and how you wanted to emote that from yourself in the way that you sang. That was actually quite easy because um, it's uh, to give you the reference points it's, it's like to me it's a mixture of Amoebics, if you know that band, meets mm -hmm. um, meets uh, Celtic Frost, which is a common, you know, influence on Napalm, and Slaughter, Canadian Slaughter. Okay. Um, so the three things there, once you put that in my head and you mix it together, it's something, it's like, it's like when you, um, it's almost like uh, one of those vending machines, you know, you put the information in the coin slot and then whatever comes out is the way is what you desired it to be you know what right, I mean? right. so it just kind of works i don't know it's hard to i mean the, the invigorating clutch was actually one of the more from my standpoint was one of the more traditional vocal approaches on on the, on the album you know it's very raw the the pace of the song allows you to stretch out a little bit vocally you know in that traditional sense then what would you say, I guess, are some of the other songs that resonate with you the most? You know what? I find it really difficult to pin down one song. Really? You know, I can't. Yeah, I can't do it. I've, you know, it, I, I, I can't make a decision when it comes to stuff like that. If you go back throughout the entire, um, you know, lineup of Napalm albums, you know, I, I couldn't tell you one song on one album that was my favourite. But I mean, to name a few, really... I would say uh, Backlash Just Because, which is the first song that came out uh, from the album itself, right. we put, which I, I think is a, a real classic, um, uh, just raucous, nervous sounding, um, you know, um, full steam ahead kind of a napalm song. And then I would also say um, Invigorating Clutch, as you mentioned, which is really spacious and, and wide and... It, um, and then there would be things like Joy de ne pas vivre, which is kind of a homage to a band called Young Gods, a uh, Swiss-French uh, avant-garde kind of um, industrial band, loosely mm -hmm. speaking. 
And then there's something, well, the title track itself, you know, Throws of Joy in the Jaws of Defeat is, and that's like pretty batshit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> crazy in terms of attack, you know, it's yeah probably the most attacking song on the album in terms of that very hardcore punk, you know, um, coming off the rails almost, but not quite kind of sort of thing in itself you know right um which is why i made it the title song you know because i looked at it i wanted to have a title song don't don't always feel the need to but i wanted to have a title song for this and i i remember picking through and i was like it's got to be that one you know that one that the music in that one is like really off the hook you know so i really need to i really want it to be that one so that's, that's what i did and then i would say like um maybe the the the, the closing track as well um um, a belly full of salt and spleen, you know, which is um, which is very much almost like a construction project, you know. Mm. It was um, like basically started from some sound loops and Shane basically building a drum kit from oil cans and uh, rubbish bins and oh. industrial screws and, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of it's like really free form um, stuff, and we just built on top of that basically so once i heard the music to that i was like you know what this this needs to be a baritone with like very very distinct notation you know uh, it, it's very it's very kind of gloomy you know and it's very um oppressive sounding you know um it, it, yeah. along the lines of things like um Einstein send a Neubarten, you know, swans, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so that was really what we, that what we were going for. So it really made sense to me to make the vocals the way that they were. And the subject matter of that song is particularly, particularly grim and noteworthy. And, um, you know, um, is a, is a, is a, is a, has a particularly resounding theme that should reverberate amongst anybody that considers themselves a human being, you know, so. <laughs> Napalm Death is yeah, it's a band, it's a musical band, but it's it's an ideas band as well, and you know the the ideas are always going to be put on the table. You know, people can choose what they want to do with them from there, but if they at least consider them and chew them over, then that's 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 quite satisfactory for me. You know, I would hope they would take them further and see the merit in what we're trying to say. You know, we all we've all seen the images of. Um, of people in boats, you know, um, escaping across oceans, you know, to try and escape violence, you know, tyranny, oppression, hunger, poverty, you know, all the things that keep the world as imbalanced as it is, as unsustainable as it is, you know. So I wanted to highlight that, you know, I basically, the, the, the fundamental of it is to say that, you know, look, these are your fellow human beings, you know, there is so much not obviously not with everybody but there is so much indifference to these people you know and all they are trying to do is to uh, to 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 get to somewhere where they can live in peace and dignity you know as every human being deserves every mm -hmm. human being you know so right. the, the fact there's so much indifference and on another level you know real uh, hatred towards these people you know for trying to liberate themselves to me is a little bit it's a little bit unfathomable to how, how we've got to this point you know and um you know napalm death is the antithesis of that you know napalm death has always said in situations like this quite simply these are your fellow human beings you know they deserve the same as what you have you know that they <laughs> haven't got right now at this point you know first and foremost which i think has been forgotten you know first of all i'm a human being that's where I start from, you know, where you're from, what flag you live under, I could care less, you know, I, I really don't care. What matters to me is you're the same flesh and blood as what I am, you know, and that's where we communicate on the, on the very first level, you know, anything after that, we'll deal with it, you know what I mean? But that's yeah. where it starts from, you know, so, so if I can't, I, I, I treat people how I, this is a very basic thing, but I, I treat people how I expect to be treated, you know? Mm -hmm. So if, if you're in need of help, I will help you. You know what I mean? And then we'll deal with anything else afterwards. It's, it's, it's really that simple, you know? Yeah. And I, the, the, the notion of in 2020, shutting people out with barbed wire fences 
uh, or in another case, putting people in cages, you know, because they dared to enter your territory, you know, if you if you look at it that way. To me, it's just, I don't know, it, it's, it, you kind of ask yourself sometimes, have human beings actually learned anything from the, from 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 the past few centuries you know of the disastrous disparities you know between uh, uh, peoples you know and and the conflict that that created i wonder sometimes whether we have learned anything you know and i i think this whole idea of nationhood and protection of nationhood and isolationism and protectionism i think it's not conducive to a peaceful world that we'd like to live in you know and there are there are people out there in, in quite in very high positions who always talk the talk about they want a peaceful world, you know, and all the rest of it, yet their actions speak otherwise. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. if you want a peaceful world, you've got to you've got to act on the most fundamental levels, which is protecting other human beings and treating them as your own. It's that simple, you know. And it's so sad that something like such a simple concept is seeming like it's having such a hard time landing with so many people that have too much power. But that also then makes me want to ask you um, about how you decided on the album art for the record. Just to, just to clear it up a little bit, because it has been said in a couple of places that, um, that it's sort of glorified animal torture, which, you know, anybody that knows Napalm Death would know that this, that's, just not, not even on our radar, you know what I mean? Right. You know, the thing is, is that art is art is art. It is used in many different ways to portray things. You know, it's figurative, it's it's metaphorical, you know, it's it's all kinds of different stuff. And I, I would just quite simply say this, you know, to the to the point that I'm making there. You you look at animal support organizations, animal rights organizations, if they want to depict some of the most heinous things that happen to our sentient beings you know who we have a duty to they will use the most horrible graphic pictures you know because that then demonstrates what's actually happening so in a sense that that's what we we were trying to do with the album you know so if you as you see it's actually quite a simple piece you know it's not that complex the dove as you see is um internationally recognized symbol of peace and tolerance and, and many other things so so we wanted to show this lack of tolerance this dehumanization by showing that peace of having been clearly very much violated there is a kind of a positive spin on it if you look on the chest of the bird there's the e in red right. which is the symbol for equality you know so so the essence of it is that the equality is coming through even in this when you think things are as bad as they can get you know there is always the positive side you know which which is what napalm death is doing it's been the antithesis to this these dehumanization principles you know that have been ramped up in the last few years which is why we're even talking about it on this album because it's current you know because governments are using language to dehumanize if you want to call them that way migrants or refugees lgbtq plus people have been treated this way not only not only the other across the atlantic but also in europe you know we have governments who are forming policies based upon anti lgbtq plus ideas you know this whole idea of people for example with a different sexual makeup somehow polluting the biological makeup of the rest of the population i mean this is fucking insane stuff you know yeah but the real danger with this stuff is you know we had dictatorships in the in the mid sort of early to mid 20th century that we're using these kind of tactics to slowly slowly dehumanize people to the, to, to the point where it led to mass murder you know and and uh, whenever i bring that stuff up but, oh no it could never happen again you know that was just mm -hmm. an extreme example but that's how things go that's mm -hmm. how that's how charismatic dictators, that's how they convince people to, to act in certain ways, you know, or they terrorize the, the local population to act in certain ways, you know. So, so these things are very real. As a band who's been writing about in some type of way political subject matter for 
a while. Um, do you feel like there's any hope really well, for everyone across the board? Well, so here's the thing. See, in, I, 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 you know, I, I kind of sit between two stalls on this because is Napalm a political band? Well, yes, you know, I mean, I, me personally, I was, I grew up on distinctive left-wing principles, you know, and it formed mm -hmm. my, the way I look at the world, you know, definitely. I mean, I would have gone that way anyway, even if I hadn't have had the other influences coming in because I'm, that's, that's how I feel as a human being, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but Napalm's also, you could say, apolitical because we recognise that politics, especially mainstream politics, is meaningless if it doesn't help the very people it's meant to. And it's arguable that in, in, in many ways it hasn't helped people, you know. Mm -hmm. All the grand pronouncements sometimes have not addressed the very core issues that this world is split you know into people who are waking up every morning wondering whether their next meal's going to come from whether a bomb's going to drop on their heads etc whether they've got to go and work at some like crappy factory that's so hazardous to the health they could basically be killed you know by right. the whole process of going to work you know versus the rest of the world which lives in relative comfort at varying levels you know mm -hmm. so that's where it becomes apolitical, I think, you know. But, you know, we can only try. I've not got a magic wand, unfortunately, you know. I can't change the world overnight. And people are who, people who, are like, romantically kind of aspire to do that are going to be very disappointed, you know. But all we can do is be one more voice or that, that is saying, no, you know, this is not. You know, the way this is unsustainable as the human race. You know, we can't keep doing this. You know, we have to learn from this and learn how to treat people, you know, and 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 so on and so forth. So we can only try. You know, napalm death for what it's worth is like continuing to to present the, the narrative, you know, present the ideas. As I said to you earlier on, put the ideas on the table and at least they're there for people. On a personal level, I lead my life I can say very much in that direction you know where I buy what I need to buy from you know my everyday life I don't support there's many things I will not support because I know what they're complicit in you know mm -hmm. there are many things I won't do you know that's what I do on a personal level you know but but that's just me people individually have got to choose how they how they go about their lives you know so we're just trying our very best you know to 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 promote humanitarianism 